Uh, well, then, without further ado, let's welcome out the stars of True Blood, Anna Paquin and Stephen Moyer. Hello, welcome. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I was a bit upset then because my son wasn't clapping when I came. <laughs> oh, teenagers. Um, you look back on this and think this is really cool. Um, so you guys have both wrapped, right? We're done. Yeah, yeah, we're all done. That is what. So tell us. I mean, what's that feel like? I mean, kind of surreal. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think it'll be very weird in November when we're not going back to work. Yeah. And saying, "Okay, see you next season." Didn't have. It's like, oh, have a nice life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That was it, actually. It was. It was. It just felt like an ordinary, normal ending of the show. And yeah. and, but those people will never be in the same room together again. And uh, that was that was tough to walk away from. Yeah. At least you all though have recently joined Twitter, so you can kind of keep in touch with the fans and like, you know, and keep in touch with your with your uh, fellow castmates. How's that been as new new to the social media sphere? How's it been? <laughs> well, I climbed out of the cave. <laughs> it was friendly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm kind of you know cautiously saying it seems really fun. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of get it now. <laughs> I don't know if I'm very good at it yet, but I, I'm enjoying it. Yeah. I think she's really good at it. <laughs> have you been looking at her I stuff? have. I know. I saw you today. You were in bed today. I saw you wake up this morning. Isn't that weird? That's weird. Sorry. Well, Sorry. you know, people Sorry. always post these... What are, it's sel- I, know, I think selfies is actually a real word now, right? It is. Cor- okay. I guess. Yes, please. Oh, then yes, like, of course. Like, oh, I just happened to wake up looking really fabulous. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I did not. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. that's actually no makeup. Yeah. But I did do it in black and white, so it's kind of cheating, so you can't see how blotchy I look first thing in the morning. No, you look good. You look good. No, but Stephen, you're an, you're an incredible photographer. So are you? You must. You need to start like putting these on Instagram and, well, and Twitter. I've, I've actually been really enjoying Instagram, and 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 I. One of the things that I am trying desperately not to do. Cause the first couple of things that I did was I found myself sitting in front of food that I liked, and and I suddenly am a valley girl taking a picture of every <laughs> Starbucks that I've ever had and so I stopped doing that pretty quickly when I was yeah. reading the so what you mean if a latte happens and there's no photo of Instagram on it did it did really it actually ha- happen, happen? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you are also from Twitter I know this uh, you're a huge soccer fan right so were you what was World football. Cup like oh, football sorry it's World football um, what was the World Cup like at the Moyer Paquin house was that like crazy was it like Super Bowl Sunday what was it like it um it was perfect because it, every single game, it sort of starts at 7 a.m. in the morning in L.A. And then there'd be another game at 10 o'clock and there'd be another game at 1 o'clock. And I'm walk, running around after these, you know, these little toddlers going, yeah. watch, <laughs> watch and learn. Because I am pretty obsessed with it. Yeah. Were you happy with uh, Germany's win? Or are, you, are you excited that they pulled it off? I, uh, if, not that you guys want to talk about football, know, sorry, although I'm sorry. happy to do so for the next hour. Um, I... Uh, I, one of the, the amazing things about the tournament, apart from perhaps that semi-final match, was that every single team could have won at some point. You know, yeah. and I've been saying for, for for years since I've been here how good the American team is, and no Americans believe me. Yeah, and I've been telling how crap, telling everybody how crap England is, and nobody believes me. <laughs> All right, so let's get back to True Blood. So you guys are both wrapped. What were the last days like? I mean, what was, like, Anna, what was your last day like on set? Just describe that. Well, um, he wrapped like a good week before I okay. did. And that you, you can talk about. Okay, I, we Stephen, don't really you go, you go first then, Stephen. Um, oh, sorry. Oh, I was going to say, like, I'm not sure what he's allowed to say. I'll, I'll, all I will say is that um, I, I had gone into the executive producer's office about... February, and I'd looked at the dates of when we were supposed to finish, and it was like four weeks earlier than we'd ever been supposed to be finished before. So I took a gamble and booked us and these guys and everybody um, on this va- really a, fun vacation. A va- on a fun <laughs> vacation, and then as the weeks started pushing, and as our show went back and further back and further back and further back, and then we had a week hiatus, and then back again, I realised that nobody was going to make it. But they shot me out. <laughs> they shot me out so I could take oh, your kids, that's the great. kids on holiday. And so um, I was really lucky, but it was really anticlimactic for me because there was one particular scene that they'd shot me for that 12 of our cast 
members shot that I wasn't there for and all oh, finished wow. on the same day. And I couldn't be there for that. And I, it looked amazing. And they were all sending pictures to me. And I was, it was pretty sad that I wasn't there. Yeah. Saturday, you got to go to the ranch in Montana and ride the horses kind of way. <laughs> and you were working. Sad face, yes. <laughs> yes. But Anna, how was it for you, the, your final day on True Blood? Well, my final day was not the day that like every single member of the Screen Actors Guild got picture wrapped. Right. Um, it was two days later when we were shooting an hour and a half outside of the city at a little church. And the second everyone yelled rap, it was like, okay, clap, clap, clap quick goodbyes and then everyone had to haul ass to like get out of there oh really <laughs> was there was no like emotion there wasn't like no, a there big was, like oh, there was okay. brief emotion right. but okay. it was emotion in the like everyone has to get all their gear out of there because yeah, yeah. you know we're in Santa Paula yeah. and if you know where that is good for you yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't I was just I lying. didn't okay. um, <laughs> but you know it's an hour and a half it's like past Magic Mountain okay um, and then by the time I got back to my trailer, they were like switching the generators over, and so all the lights had been turned out, and I couldn't find like you know my shoes <laughs> or my clothes. Wow! All right. Well, not finding my clothes is something that hasn't not the first time and on True Blood, but <laughs> that but is I'm correct. Uh, no, but it was uh, that there was like a, the big scene that he was talking about that we shot the sort of two days earlier was kind of I think the sort of wrap day yeah. that. I will personally hold on yeah. to because that was where there was like all the tears and hugging and yeah. love festival. That's so crazy. Um, it's so crazy that it's over. I can't believe it. Um, so I had a question on Twitter from someone named L- L- The Lou who wanted to know if you all took anything from set, any, any sort of mementos. I actually got a text today from Mike Horn. I was going to say, have you filled out your I, that I went around Bill's office and I put yellow post-it stickers on everything that I wanted to keep. <laughs> and by the time I was on about the third set of post-its, um, somebody said, I'm not sure you're going to be able to have all of that. Because I particularly <laughs> loved the sort of design that, that Suzuki had done, Suzuki Ingeslev, our art designer, had done. And so there was a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I don't know what I'll get to keep, but I tried to get an awful lot. Yeah. Because I'm a cheapskate. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Did you take anything? Um, well, although that couch has gotten a lot of action, mm-hmm. it's yes. possibly the least comfortable couch <laughs> I have ever done anything on. <laughs> um, you know, it's not even comfortable to sit on. Yeah. Uh, so, didn't ask for that. Um, Suki's house is whilst absolutely immaculately perfectly detailed for what Grand's house would look like not totally my vibe okay so you're not like country french or like i don't even know what that's considered I, like i think it's like southern country. like i don't know grandmother yeah, I, don't. I mean it's perfect yeah. i mean like literally there's details that have probably never been seen on the show that yeah, yeah. suzuki again like Genius, but not stuff I really want to take home. I did, however, have a lot of fun in the costume archives. Yes, I know. So someone wanted to know, also on Twitter, um, Ashley wanted to know if you have a favorite Sookie outfit. I mean, I really liked the red and white dress that she wears to Fantage the first yeah. time. Yeah. Um, that was a fun one. Um, and I really liked my Merlots uniform. <gasps> I was going to say, do I you have... I yeah. got a lot of lot of play and also if you're gonna play like the somewhat ditzy blonde that gets her ass kicked all the time it's kind of convenient to be in like shorts and sneakers <laughs> and a t-shirt as opposed to like you know a mini skirt and high heels yeah so true. it was actually a very practical kind of like action outfit true true so and also you know we spent a long time kind of getting all the details with like trying to as far as per the book, like, mm, no, is this the right one? Is this the right Nikes? Is this the tell, right, you know? Tell, tell these guys, because I didn't even know this when, when we were talking about it. Tell, tell them about the details in the earrings. <laughs> so a, a detail that absolutely nobody other than Audrey Fisher, our costume designer, and Danny Glicker, who was before her, mm-hmm. would, would notice is um, that Suki's earrings reflect assorted thematic plot and or personal development thing. So before she finds out that she's a fairy, there was lots of little fairy motifs in my earrings. Then when she was, then when she's in love, there's like full hearts, out of love, little empty hearts, Aww. and like little, little things like that. Every single one of them reflective of something happening in the plot. But wow. again, tiny details that yeah. we geek out over, but... Yeah. Nobody, I'm sure, really cares. No, they all care. Something to go back and watch. 
over the, all those six seasons. Um, but wait, the, the, red and, the red and white dress, wasn't that ruined by Long Shadow, though? No, that was oh, a white not. dress. Oh, that's the white dress. Okay. Because I wanted to ask you, because I don't know if people know this, but you love the gruesome stuff. I like, really she, do. Anna loves the gory stuff. Like, she loved... I love this story about when Long when when Stephen stakes Long, Long Shadow. Shadow in the first um episode or first season in at Fantasia. Tell the story about what Brian Buckner, okay, who's the so new showrunner, Bucky, um, who's now our showrunner, who's been a staff writer and producer since the beginning, um, wrote the episode where uh, Long Shadow tries to, I guess, fly through the air and <laughs> I don't know, eat me. What was he going to do? Sure. You you. Um, I read his mind, and he. You is, don't read his mind. You read. Sorry, um, I read. The, the, yeah. the, the staff, one of the girls who's the staff. Okay, mind. so he wants to kill me for some for reasons that I'm a little blurry on right now. But he gets staked by this guy here, literally like all over me, which um, at the time kind of entailed him having this rig that looked like a fire hose connected to his um, his jaw with... The way, the way they do that for the geeks amongst you who are interested is that they, they run a hose up yeah. the side of here and it comes up the side is taped around the mouth like this. But then there's like a big opening. And then, then there's an, an opening here, but you, which means that, you, of course, you have to shoot it from the, yeah, side. the side. So when you're shooting like this, and they've got their mouth open, it's actually gushing from the side of the mouth. It's but the stuff that's coming out is like an assortment of like little chunks of weird, like, boiled latex and like little children <laughs> that we didn't want things like that yeah the ones we chucked away um wow so you know we get one shot at this you know because <laughs> otherwise the cleanup's going to be a little epic right and so i wanted to make sure that you know i gave him everything he wanted and and so i asked him it was like eyes and mouth open or closed and he looks at me and he's like open i was like okay and, you know, it was love at first uh, vomit. I know. Wait, so Stephen, do you, are you the same way? Do you love, like, the gruesome stuff? Like, are you, I mean, wh- like, when you, like, when you sort of reemerge after you kill Lilith uh, at the end of, se- was it season five? And you're, like, full on naked and you're covered in blood. Was that a, was that a fun day at work for you? Day? That lasted forever. <laughs> um, I mean, <sighs> Where do you begin? You know, you, <laughs> firstly, you read that in the script that, that Bill disintegrates into a pile of blood and disappears and then comes back up out of the blood and rises from the ground. And then by the time he comes up, he is now a blood figure. And at that point... But you got bigger fangs. But I did get bigger fangs in my nakedness. Uh, read into that what you will. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's, it's at times like that when you read things like that where you go... I don't think we jumped the shark I think we jumped the Atlantic <laughs> and uh, but you have to do it and and you know there w- th- that was that was a day in particular at the end of season five where I um I wanted you know literally covered in blood head to foot and I and I wanted some kind of cover for the man arena and uh, <laughs> and so I got one of Anybody who had seen anybody who saw the show and saw Lilith in um, in her blood naked everything will know that she was covered downstairs and au naturel and au naturel yes and so I got the the costume department to build me what can only really be described as a kind of raccoon oh. and uh, oh. so when I turned up on set that that first day when everybody was expecting big blood scary Billeth to arrive. There was me covered in blood with this little sort of <laughs> big squirrel. <laughs> and, uh, and then of course in the, 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 the beginning of episode, episode one season six, I was directing that episode and I had to direct Anna naked. and Skarsgård completely naked. naked, head to toe, covered in blood with my, by that time it was a velvet <laughs> The costume department had made me a a velvet cod piece. So, where is that now? The Smithsonian? Where is that? Where are we? Is it here? Is it at the? Where? Where did we? I I think I'm going to be auctioning that off at some point. Okay. Yeah, I I like that. Uh, It's uh, actually a trampoline in my kid's yard. (laughs) Oh, will you stop? Oh my god. I mean, how much pressure do you guys feel on delivering? like an epic final season is it is it do you feel the pressure do you feel like it's the writers i mean do, are you able to separate yourself well i mean it's a group effort i mean we're yeah. all we're all a team and yeah. obviously we don't have control over 
the specifics of the plot or whatever, but there as much relying on us yeah. to you know man up and give the performances that they need as we are on them to give us good material. And it's been a really harmonious relationship and and partnership these years. And yeah, it's, there's a lot of pressure. Yeah. What about you, Stephen? Do you I mean, I think that I think that we are deeply aware how much the audience want it to be good, and also we want we want there to be a resonance about the final season that um, people take away with them to, and, and it makes them look fondly back at everything that's gone before. So I think that there was a, there's a number of storylines that we try to... If, is everybody up to speed? Yeah. Ish? Cause I'm, I don't want to do any spoilers. So, <laughs> but but the, the point being that but this, this upcoming week, you know, things start shifting and it becomes... It's... You have to get rid of a lot of the plot to be able to concentrate on, on the character stuff, and that plot is hangover from seasons before. So you've got to kind of discard all of that stuff and get rid of that stuff before you can move on to the emotional character arcs, and that's something that I think we all agreed on that would be something that we thought would be a great way of ending it to make it about the people. Yeah, I mean, so there's only a few episodes left. Uh, a lot of people on Twitter wanted to know, will Bill and Sookie be together? I mean, you can't really... And obviously, we're going to tell you exactly <laughs> I, I how that turns out know, right exactly. now. As long as you don't tell anyone. <laughs> don't tell anyone, yes, but... Yes, um, I mean, when I think about it, what are they going to do? Fire me? <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> that used to be the reason I was really scared about <laughs> ruining things, was, like, getting fired. But yeah. I think we were all effectively fired, like, last week. We're on welfare now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is obviously kidding. <laughs> But what can you say about the final, like the, you know, we're about halfway, almost halfway through these final batch of episodes. Can you say anything? Nothing that's going to be interesting. I mean, I can give you some long-winded sort of euphemistic, you know, thing about like wrapping up loose ends and stuff. But I think everyone here is smart enough to know that that just means I can't tell you anything fun. Mm -hmm. True. True. So obviously there is resolution to the Sookie and Bill storyline that's been set up since the first episode of the series, but you'll have to watch. (laughs) Can you say, will there be more big deaths? Because we've already always seen... always more big deaths. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this year our body count is, you know, yeah. pretty epic. It was quite interesting, actually, because I, I joked at some point during season four or five that our table reads were like the cast of Ben-Hur. I mean, it was like this. <laughs> you know, everybody would crowd into this room, and as this season has gone on, the, the space between the chairs has got bigger... And bigger and bigger until you finally got elbow room. The last table there's room. like, oh, so I can final actually, table read. There's, there's, there's a people. lot fewer people by episode ten. So, yeah. yes, lots of people die. All right, let's show a clip. We're going to show a clip from this week's episode. <laughs> you all, you guys have had a lot more scenes together this year. I feel like is that fair? Yes. Yeah. Is that nice? Like, as a married couple, is it? Do you do you want more scenes together at work, or are you like, oh, get me away from this person? Well, I mean, I see enough of you. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you know, he's really, really unfortunate, which is why I married him because <laughs> I don't want to spend any time with him ever. Um, no, it's actually kind of a bummer the seasons that we are on totally separate plot lines because that means if I'm working, he's not, yeah. which means like you effectively don't see each other for like six months. Which, I mean, I'm not going to speak for both of us, but I don't particularly enjoy that. No pressure. <laughs> Ditto. Uh, no, I um, I, I, I've been incredibly lucky on this show to get to work with the misses and Deborah Ann Wall, who plays Jessica. And so I've, and you know, my first love interest was was Anna's character, and then obviously it then became this daughter. And Deborah and I were very close. So those two actresses are unbelievable. I got to do an awful lot of stuff with Skarsgård. And, um, you know, th- those being my big... And, and of course, Mariana Clavano, who, who was my maker, Lorena. I mean, unbelievable, unbelievable quality. And, and that whole season that you had to have every single scene with Dennis O'Hare. And then, and then, well, I was going to bring up Dennis. Dennis is because that one is, wasn't fair. You got all the Dennis. Dennis time. is a New York actor, as you guys probably know, who played Russell Edgington. So good. And 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 I, 
I literally, and I said this the other day, I think I said this in, in when Tim interviewed me. We take Tim everywhere with us. Yeah, Tim's our, <laughs> if, if, uh, our resident uh, moderator. He lives in our <laughs> guest house. It's really cute. I would like that. Um, Tim, uh, we'll, enjoy that. we'll adopt you. Okay, thank you. But, but you. working with you. Dennis O'Hare as well was, was a revelation for me because it, it actually was, it kind of recreated for me what it felt like the very first time I went on stage. It was kind of terrifying to be with him because he's so talented. And, you know, th there's a, I'm sure you guys have all played that drama game where, where you receive a ball and if you get thrown something, you have to catch it. And then the way you catch it kind of determines the way that you then throw it back. And when I was at drama school, I hated this doing it. Oh, oh. And, and but, but when you're working with Dennis, every single word, every single syllable has been, is, is fired at you in such a way that it turns out, it, it makes a difference to the way it gets thrown back to him. And then he reacts to what he gets. I mean, if you, those so of you. So basically everyone looks much better at their job when they're opposite Dennis. Yeah. And I, I, literally, I literally had this visceral feeling of what it first felt like when I was 15, 14, 15, and I decided I wanted to do this for a living. And that, that was, I mean, it's extraordinary. And everybody felt the same way about working with Dennis. And, you know, testament to him. And so, you know, long answer to your question, but I'm so lucky to have worked with all these people. And of the female variety, she's my favorite. He has to say that. <laughs> no. no, seriously, like, we signed legal documents. That <laughs> wedding license, I'm pretty sure, means that he has to say that in front of this many people. Well, maybe. No. Um, speaking of, you, you spoke of theater before. There's, all, there's this rumor that there's going to be a True Blood musical. What are your thoughts on this? And also, Stephen, we know you can carry a tune from Sound of Music Live and your, and your previous theater background. Um, would in you, Chicago. Would, yeah, would you in Chicago? Uh, would you would you want to would you want to do a musical of, of True Blood? Um, so Nathan Barr, who is the very gifted uh, musical director of our show, who creates all the instrumental music, he's not the guy who who finds our amazing found music, which is incredible, the kind of Louisiana swamp music. That's a guy called Gary Calamar. But this guy Nathan Barr writes all the orchestral stuff and is a wonderful cellist. So he created Bill and Sookie's love theme, all of those things that you remember that with that kind of sweeping cello. So Nathan came to me, we'd become friends anyway, and he came to me and, and mentioned this idea that, uh, about a musical. Um, I thought it was a great idea, this was about season three or four, but it was never ever my intention to be part of it. But he asked me... Didn't you lay down some tracks for him? But he asked me to come in and listen to some stuff and lay down the Bill vocals for the music, which I did. And that was because he wanted to present um, these pieces to Charlene Harris and to Alan Ball and to HBO because he had to get their permission to carry on writing. And if, if they agreed, then he would start writing this musical. And so... Uh, I can tell you, there's not very many people that have heard it, but I can tell you it's really good. He's incredibly gifted. And um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know whether in a couple of years' time when it's completed and this is gone, whether there's an appetite for it or whether people will just be going, you know, True Blood's gone now or whether they'll go, oh, my God, new True Blood. I don't know. Is there a song called The Meat Tree? Is there, like, Marianne the Meat Tree? Marianne the Meat Tree. No, I don't know. Um, wait, keep going, Anna, keep going. Yeah. I want to hear more of it. Yes, no, and you know. just wrote it. Uh, yeah. Wait, Anna, would you, would you be interested in this? Can you carry a tune? Are you a singer? I am not a singer. No? You don't even have a karaoke song? <laughs> a couple of vodkas in, yeah. <laughs> I love that, I love that. Wait, so what, I mean, looking back now, do you have, like, one really vivid memory you can share with us of, of this experience of True Blood? Like, is there something that, one thing that comes to mind, I mean, besides meeting the loves of your lives, um, <laughs> meeting each other, but is there one, like, sort of either a season or a moment or a favorite scene or a favorite moment between you guys? Between, oh, be between no, us. No, not necessarily between you. Oh. It, can be, it can be separate. I mean, because we've had fun stuff together, yeah, but, yeah. you know. Um, my all-time, I think, possibly favorite day ever on any set was the like knockdown drag out bitch fight with Debbie Pelt. Oh love. That was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, 
Britt Morgan, who played Debbie, had, prior to our first stunt rehearsal, never in any context thrown a punch and did an amazing job. And her amazing uh, double, Stella, and my, my double, Heidi Pasco, who did the stuff that, you know, they really didn't want us to do, like smashing chairs over each other's heads. Um, but, like, it was this sort of amazing, crazy, visceral energy that day. And it was all very kind of you know, sorry, but like girl powery. I know that sounds really like cliche or something, but it was so much fun because usually Sookie's just getting her ass kicked by someone who's like bigger than her or has superpowers. And it's like, oh, okay. So that's what happens when you get punched in the face by somebody who's five times bigger than you. But this was the first time that it was actually like blow for blow, kind of an even fight. And, you know, I really dug that. It was fun. Yeah. The physical I stuff I love. Anna Paquin, action hero. That's your next, you're going to do an action That's movie not next. funny. Okay. <laughs> I would do that. Okay, I'm like, all right. I'm okay. like, I want to be Tomb Raider. <laughs> okay, all right. Let's, 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 let's reboot Lara Croft with, with I Anna I mean, Paquin. obviously not one where I have to look like that, because okay. um, <laughs> I'm not going to set that. Um, yeah, that's not something I can achieve. Stephen, what about you? Do you have a favorite, like looking back, something that really sticks out? Uh, it's kind of hard to think of one, but yeah. I... Uh, um, and, and every time I get asked this, I think of a different one. But... Uh, I mean that first the first the first thing I'll say is the pilot was just an incredible experience um having read this script and having got the part and having gone to America to 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 do this job and be with Alan Ball and in that environment was extraordinary it was there was just a vibe about it that that I've never experienced on any film set ever but the one I'm going to pick right now is the beginning of season three, where I'm I'm surrounded by five real wolves, and I go with Dennis O'Hare to meet the wolves, and they're real, and and you can't. You, I swear to God, don't look them in the eye. <laughs> what? Don't look them in the eye. And you're like, why? You can't look them. Don't look them in the eye. <laughs> oh. And don't move your hands around. Keep your hands by your side. I mean, terrifying. And, and there's electric you know, fences. So you don't get eaten. So you don't get eaten. But there's electric fences everywhere. And all around me, there is a gentleman who was an amputee who was laying on the floor naked and then a, and then a fake prosthetic leg laying next to him. Um, his stump all bloodied and the leg all bloodied. Five wolves two horses, a bunch of dudes pretending to be wolves, and a bunch of guys pretending to be vampires. Naked wolves. <laughs> Naked wolves. Sure. And, and that night, I was looking around. We'd been off for a couple of, you know, we'd been off for a couple of months, and that was my first night back on season three. And I looked around and I went, what are we doing? <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> and Unless you get in. Yes, I actually got thrown off the horse that night, but yeah, but it was that, um, it yeah. was unbelievable. And you so look aside around. from the trip to the ER, that was was a great night. But that was just one of those nights where you just like I can't believe that we're getting paid to to have this much fun, and that's what this whole seven years has been. Yeah. All right, I think out we're of curiosity, were your wolves on the other side of the electric fence? <laughs> I'm just curious because they were in this instance, yes. Yeah, because. I was, I'm kind of scared of large dogs. So when wolves kind of entered the, the whole scenario, I was like, I'm just letting you know, I'm probably not going to be your girl if you need me like up close with the actual wolf. Um, which of course, then like three seasons or two seasons later, I had like a page and a half walk and talk with Joe in his wolf form. <laughs> and they're putting all these electric fences up, but that's great, except I'm inside the electric fence with the wolf. <laughs> so... Not really sure what the logic was there, other than the wolf not eating the crew. One of the funny things that that happened throughout the show was whenever Anna said, um, "I won't be good with this element," it then followed about two weeks later. <laughs> They're testing you as an action hero. They're testing your skills. All right, I think we're going to do uh, audience questions. Hi, my question is for Anna. In the pilot first episode, you had like a really intense fight scene towards the end of the episode when you first met Bill. Was that a real fight, or did you have to use a body double for that? Um, there was a portion that they had to use 
a stunt double for because the car was driving directly at us. And in case they wanted to take the show to series, I guess they didn't want to kill me in the pilot. Um, and there were some really wide shots, I think, that they may have used um, in, in that first episode. Two, episode two is where like it gets really super gruesome, and Heidi, my stunt double, had to do some of that because they wouldn't let me. But but if you're asking if I did get the ever-loving shit kicked out of me with someone wearing cowboy boots, yes. And yes, they missed a few times because they were a stunt driver, not a stunt like kicker or something, and kept on kicking me in the ribs, which was like about two inches north of where my stunt pads were. So that was fun, but you know. Actually, I did kind of like it, but that's weird. <laughs> and there's a really cute picture of me and Heidi dressed all bloody from that night that I really like. Hey, uh, this one's for Anna. Um, besides myself, I can safely say you're the person in the world that I've seen naked most. Um, <laughs> through, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's <laughs> no problem. Uh, has it? I feel the same way about Kate Winslet. <laughs> uh, exactly. Um, since the start of the series, uh, has it always been easy for you just doing it, or has it gotten? Have you gotten more comfortable with your body? And do you like watch Game of Thrones now and be like, "Yeah, I do that better." <laughs> okay, multi-part question. Um, <laughs> Many parts. Um, yeah, parts. No, no <laughs> puns intended. Um, well, was I comfortable? I'd done it before and other stuff um, that didn't actually come out until after True Blood had aired. So it kind of, I guess, looked like that was the sort of, you know, maiden voyage, so to speak. Um, also, uh, I grew up in New Zealand, and not to make any generalizations about America, but they're a little more uptight about nudity here for reasons that, hey, whatever, that's your thing. That's not how I was raised. So, like, you know, if we see boobs or nipples or whatever, it's not exactly front page news. Um, so that was not really a big deal. Getting more comfortable... I mean, absolutely. I mean, by the time literally every single person on set has been naked with almost every single person on set, it becomes, I mean, I guess boring is kind of a good way to describe it. Like, certainly nobody's, like, staring and being pervy. It's just like, okay. You do get the odd camera assistant who hasn't been on the show for oh, a yeah, while. Oh, yeah, like brand new guys. <laughs> just, who are just like, like... like scrubbing a lens going... <laughs> And everyone else is just getting around to their things. And but then looking embarrassed and looking away and, and also looking around probably like, why is nobody else thinking this is weird? And I was like, well, because... Oh, and I've never seen Game of Thrones, actually. <gasps> Anna, sacrilege. <laughs> no, I haven't. So I don't know. I don't know what they do. I hear it's pretty risque, but I will say we did it first, even if we didn't do it better. <laughs> Um, Anna, what's the difference from playing Rogue on X-Men who literally touches people, steal their powers, memories, and probably their Life. lifespan versus playing a fairy who just blasts a beam of light from the hand and just randomly reads the closest mind or whoever's mind they want, <laughs> you want to? Um, well, Rogue got absolutely no action, so I kind of found that hilarious. I survived three X-Men movies and never really had an action scene, so to speak. So, I mean, look, that was cool. I got all the like, meaty acting, like, dialogue stuff, and I got to work with, you know, Ian and Patrick and Hugh and all these extraordinary actors, so that's great. But I kind of found it hilarious that once I was the girl with the blonde hair and the push-up bra, suddenly I got all the action scenes. <laughs> um, but, you know, they're, they're both fun in different ways. <laughs> Hi, how are you? By the way, Anna, you're so gorgeous. <laughs> By the way, your husband's here, sorry. But my question, you won the Oscar like uh, 20 years ago for piano, right? Yes, yeah. I'm just trying to do the maths. Okay, yeah. I was like, it was like... I was 90, 11, 90, I'm turning 32 next week. 93, um. 94. But anyway, yeah. you are wonderful. I love the movie. Thank so you. So my question is, uh, where do you keep the Oscar trophy? <laughs> 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 Thank you. That's okay. my question. Every like 15 <laughs> times I get asked that, I feel like I have to move it so I can have a new answer because I get very bored of listening to myself saying the same thing. Um, he is currently sitting on our kitchen counter because this last Oscar night, my makeup artist and I put eyelashes on him. <laughs> and because we're really, really organized, it actually just hasn't been moved since then. So stuff is kind of cluttered around him. Um, it's not that he lives in the kitchen. 
I'm not really sure what you would do with an Oscar in a kitchen, but generally somewhere... Like in, a rolling pin or something. But he's not a very good shape for a rolling pin. True. I mean, maybe to hold the recipe book open, you know, there's really big giant... I don't know, whatever. Um, he usually is stashed somewhere in my room, but apparently he's literally still sitting where he was left on With Oscar. his eyelashes on. With his eyelashes, which I think are kind of badass, but whatever. Hello. Um, I was wondering if you could share a little about your personal love story. <laughs> and can we get a suke? <laughs> Please. I just don't know which one to do first. Um, I think that... I think that I, I came into this... I came into this job, um, it was 2007, and um, I, I had, I was so excited to get this gig. Um, I'd, it, it's funny how these things happen, but I'd walked away from America at that point. Not because I didn't love America, but because I'd been over and done many, many jobs, and I'd particularly, I'd done a pilot for Fox that, 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 Long story, but didn't end up happening. And at that point, I just went, I'm done. It's all good. I'd just been in Australia for a, for a, for a long time and doing another job. Hadn't seen my kids for a while, and I just felt like I've got to go back to London, and I've got to be around them, and I'm not going to do it. And at that point, it, and I say this to young actors a lot, it's the only power you have as an actor, the only power is the power to say no. And it's really hard to say no when you're, when you're unemployed. And, or an actor in general. Or an actor in general, because you have, you've got bills to pay. You've got schools to pay for, you've got et cetera, et cetera. So I, at that point, started saying no. And I, the more I said no, the more offers came, until finally this job came. And this job, when I read it, I knew was different. I knew it was better than anything else that I'd read for ages and ages and ages. And I ended up back in LA doing this job, massive decision because it meant going to America. And you know, my kids were in London and huge, but I knew that this would change their lives. What I didn't know was that it would lead to this as well. I had no clue. At that time it was, I was by myself, I was on my own, I was going to America and I was doing this thing. And it was very much about providing for my kids and home life and looking for their future. This was just like an extraordinary bonus that I absolutely did not expect. And, and, and when that happened, everything, everything sort of slotted together. This job that was the thing that I'd been looking for um, got tripled and quadrupled and, you know, I, I, it was in, unstoppable. And that's how I met Suki. <laughs> Anna doesn't like to be emotional, so. <laughs> or we did this or, pilot, we met, we started dating, we got engaged, we got married, we had a couple kids, and it's all really good, thanks. <laughs> Hi, I just wanted to thank you for the past seven years. It's been an amazing ride. Um, I have more of a personal question for the both of you. I know I can dress up as Sookie for Halloween, which I did. Um, and that's Me because, too. Um, and that's my way of escaping, you know, just my daily life. But you play Sookie all the time for the past seven years, and you play Bill. What do you do to separate yourselves from that and maybe have some balance? Do you meditate? Do you do yoga? What do you do to kind of keep time with yourselves, but also separately? I box. You, do you really? That's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. I also run a lot. <laughs> she really does box. <laughs> <laughs> this, one, this one actually trained for quite a long time with Freddie Roach, who, if anybody knows their boxing, is Manny Pacquiao's trainer. One um, of the perks of working for HBO was being hooked up with some training with him. That was so cool. Wait, are you still boxing? 
I mean, not right this second. I'm sitting in a chair talking I, to you. Well, I know. I know. Yes. But, okay. When, when, time permitting, yes. Yeah. Oh, so, Anna Paquin. Badass Anna Paquin. I had no idea. She's really mean. <laughs> um, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so gentle. Um, you know, I think, I think that, uh, that this seven years has been unbelievable. It's been, it's been incredible. I, I adore my, you know, it's another question that you get asked by people who want to act is, you know, if, even if you don't like what your character is doing, you have to love your character and you have to love, love something about them. And I'm particularly lucky. I love a lot about this amazing character that I got gifted. Um, but when you walk away from it, you've got a life, you've got a life that is, you know, that you have to lead. I, I, as Tim alluded to earlier, I love photography. We live by the beach. Um, but it's, this job kicks your ass and you don't get as much time as you want. I, I, we were just recently in, in Montana riding horses and somebody said to me, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to build a chair. <laughs> I want to lathe. I want to turn, you know what I mean? I want to do something that's completely other than this. I want to build a new tree house. I, you know, it's something, it's, I'm so glad for the seven years, but I'm so excited about being away from that. I'm still gonna get asked to say Suki an awful lot, and I'll be happy to do it, but. Champagne problem. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're so happy for the seven years, and thank you guys for coming uh, tonight, and thank you all for coming. Thank you and for coming, guys. Thank you so much. Watch True Blood on Sunday nights at nine. Thank what you all again. Said. Thank you, Anna and Stephen. Thank you.